Hi, it's Corey. And Stephanie. And welcome to Epcot, here for opening day of the 2020 Epcot International Festival of the Arts. And we are so excited to be here. We are very excited. It is an absolute beautiful day here in Epcot. I mean, I think the high is only like 75, which is perfect when you want to eat around the World Showcase. Yeah, it's beautiful here. And uh, just like usual, every year with the Festival of the Arts, the food is always delicious. So we're excited to try some of the new dishes this year, even some of the returning dishes and they're always plated so beautifully you hear me say it often the Instagrammable food that's what we're gonna be eating today hopefully it tastes as good as it looks but I'm excited to get started here at Epcot ready to go let's go First food stop of the day, we've made it to the World Showcase and to Pop Eats. And it's here that we're gonna try the sous vide chicken roulade with apples and sage served with warm brie fondue, blueberry and beet gel, and garnished with beet chip crumbles. And this was $6.75. Okay, so let's give this sous vide chicken a try. So if you're not familiar with sous vide and you don't know what it is, basically what they do is they have a big thing of water that has a, a sous vide like machine in it. And basically it rotates the water around and keeps it at a consistent temperature. So whatever temperature they cook the chicken at, they keep it at a consistent temperature. They put the chicken into bags and drop it into the water and it cooks it to the perfect temperature, doesn't overcook it. And it usually creates like a really great texture on chicken. Um, this has the apples and all that other stuff in there. Let's give it a try. That's pretty tasty. Probably the flavor that kind of is the most overpowering of everything is that fondue, um, which is really tasty. It's got a nice creamy flavor with the cheese. The, the one thing that I didn't really get much of in that first bite was the apples. Um, there definitely are quite a few apples kind of stuffed into the middle of it. I'm gonna get another bite with the apples and more of that beet gel. And that's really good. I think uh, a really interesting dish because there's all of these different flavors that all kind of work together. That bite with the beet gel, the beet is very earthy, of course, and then the apple flavor, the sweetness from the apple, and the chicken, again, is cooked perfectly. Um, so I think a really great start here for the festival. So our next stop is here in Mexico at the El Artista Hambriento booth. And it's here that we're gonna try the Sopes de Barbacoa. And this is braised barbacoa beef served on a fried corn shell with black beans, cheese, Mexican cream, and chives. And this was $7.25. So Mexican food has always been one of my favorites. Let's see how this tastes. That is absolutely delicious. The corn tortilla itself has a very good flavor as does the black beans that are kind of um, layered into the bottom of it. The beef is very, very good also. It's nice and moist and the, the cheese and the cream topping on top pair very nicely with it. This is certainly a uh, decent portion because they do a good amount of the beef on top. So it's certainly shareable. I really enjoy the flavors here. I'm excited to eat some more of it. Our next stop is here in Germany at Cuisine Classique, where we're gonna try the red wine braised short rib with parsnip puree, broccolini, baby tomatoes, and aged balsamic, all for $8. All right, so let's give this braised short rib a try. Actually, so, so far today, this is the only dish that I tried last year when we were here, and it was so delicious with that balsamic, so see if it holds up to what it was last year. And yeah, just like last year, absolutely delicious. The short rib, so from the beef we had over in Mexico to the beef here, even more tender, just completely kind of fall apart, buttery smooth, 
beef. So tasty, that parsnip puree with the tomatoes and the broccolini, and then you add that balsamic on top, all of it together, it just works perfectly. If you're a fan of that, like, that nice pop, that kick of the balsamic flavor, then you're gonna love this. I can't wait to see what Stephanie thinks. So out of all the things we've tried so far, this one to me actually looks the least like the picture. Not necessarily a bad thing, um, but the picture made it look like there was more of that parsnip puree, which is something I was looking forward to trying. But, I mean, it is smeared on the plate, so let's see how the flavors come through. So that's actually easy for me. Um, this is so far one of my favorite things we've tried. Um, the beef itself is extremely tender. I was able to cut right through it with the fork with no problems whatsoever. Um, I do wish there was more of that parsnip puree, but that's only because it's creamy and delicious and has a very good flavor paired with the beef. Um, the broccolini is cooked very nicely and the star of this dish has to be that balsamic glaze because it's got such a nice rich flavor that it really seasons everything perfectly on the plate. And as you can see, I know it's hard to tell, but this is a pretty good sized plate. Um, this is the most expensive entree that we've gotten so far at $8. But as you can see, I mean, it is a good portion size and it tastes delicious. We've made it to America and our next stop here at the artist table where we're gonna try the pan seared scallop with chorizo, roasted red pepper coolies, and Parmesan crisp for $7. So this scallop definitely has to be the prettiest thing we've gotten here so far, as you can see. Now let's see how the flavors are. This dish is packed with flavor. The scallop itself has a very nice sear on it. It's nice and tender how it should be. So the cook, they actually got right on it, which I was kind of concerned because it didn't seem like they were being um, necessarily made to order. They were pre-plating, knowing that they were having a quick turnaround, but the texture is perfect. The chorizo itself is nice. Nice. The sausage has a really good flavor, and the red pepper puree that's on the bottom actually offers a lot of flavor. Um, it is a little bit on the spicy side, so if you're not into spicy dishes, this may not be the best thing to try here for you. Um, I would like to give this crisp on top a try, just to see what the flavor's like. That's good. It's like a Parmesan crisp. It's really nice. It's got a nice cheese flavor. It's nice and crispy as it should be. And it's pretty because it gave you something for the flour to sit upon. Overall, this is a nice dish. We made another stop off here in America at the Funnel Cakes booth where we're going to try the peanut butter and jelly sandwich funnel cake with peanut butter ice cream, marshmallow cream, and raspberry glaze all for $9.50. Alright, so we're going to try this crazy looking funnel cake ice cream sandwich. It's peanut butter ice cream like we said and then there's that strawberry jam on top and what looks like maybe like marshmallow fluff. Let's give it a try. It's so, it's so big. It's very messy, but it is delicious. I love that the, I, I taste the, that marshmallow, it's like a marshmallow cream um, right away. That's really good. And then you taste that peanut butter ice cream. It's got a really great peanut butter flavor. It's frozen kind of like a, a solid block um, that they pull out of the freezer when they're making it because the funnel cake is coming out fresh and hot. I wish that there was a way that they could put the strawberry stuff like on the inside instead of the outside because it makes it so messy to eat. I mean, my fingers are covered and it's a windy day here too, so nothing wants to stay still. But uh, it is delicious. I will say though, for the dessert and for a lot of the desserts here in comparison, $9.50 for this. So uh, a little bit pricey for sure on the dessert side for here at the festival, but it is absolutely delicious. Now what's a trip to the Festival of the Arts unless you actually pick up some art? We're super excited about this piece because it was painted by Paige O'Hara, which for those that don't know, that is the voice of Belle from Beauty and the Beast. You want to know something even more awesome? She's here to actually sign it for us. Very good. That's so cute. I it's, it's a microphone. That is adorable. They, they call it they call it a dead cat microphone. Oh I don't know why. That is so funny. <laughs> Hi, what's oh, your name? My name is Stephanie. Stephanie. Yes, yeah, hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Beautiful oh, artwork. Fun. Thank you. In 
Canada, we've made our way over to the Masterpiece Kitchen, and it's here that we're gonna try the vanilla rose water and pistachio panna cotta for $8. So this is a really pretty panna cotta. I'm excited to see how the flavors are in it. I am a fan of the pistachio flavor, and who doesn't like vanilla? Um, but also the rose water. Um, so let's see how this pairs. I admit, I thought it was a soft outer shell because it looked like it was melting for us. But as you can see, that's a hard shell. And when I cracked it open, it's filled. It looks really, really good though. I absolutely love this. Um, I'm gonna have a hard time describing it, but the best way I can explain it is that rose flavor is a very light, subtle flavor. And then you also got the creaminess and the vanilla. The pistachio crumble has a very nice flavor and pairs perfectly with the rose flavor. I don't know how, how else I can describe this to you, except it's very light, light and creamy, and the flavors all pair very nicely together. So I agree with Stephanie, this is kind of interesting that it's like a shell and then it's filled with the panna cotta. Um, the other thing that I don't know if you tried uh, was that the, around the edge there's like little drops of what looked like maybe some strawberry sauce, um, so, or maybe raspberry. Uh, so I've got a little bit of that, some of the crumble, and then some of the panna cotta. Let's see how it tastes. It's very, very interesting. Um, I will agree that it's delicious and very, very light and creamy. Um, the rose water is really interesting. You definitely taste it right away. Like it, the, the rose water hits you, but it's not overpowering. It's just a very unique, uh, like fragrant flavor. Um, it's delicious. It's something definitely different and unique here. And for the Festival of the Arts, again, it's all about the plating too, the flavors and the plating. And this, before we broke it, was beautiful and very much a very Instagrammable dish. Um, but really delicious and a uh, very light dessert here. So for our last snack of the day, we stopped off up here at the Port of Entry at Decadent Delights, where we're going to try the Lemon Blood Orange Tart for $6.50. All right, so let's give this blood orange tart a try. You can see when I cut into it that there's kind of that lemon on top. You can see the orange on the bottom, kind of that gel in there. And then there's a, like a whole array. It's like a little buffet on top of a tart. All these little different things. Let's give it a try and see how it tastes. That's delicious. The lemon has a nice kick to it, you know, with that, that orange on the bottom. The flavors together work perfectly. Um, the crust itself is not really sweet at all, so all the flavors inside kind of speak for themselves. There is, uh, I think this is like a little meringue kiss. And that's good. There's some blueberries on top. I don't really know what this is. I'm gonna try it though. It's some kind of little, looks like a bottle cap of some kind of orange. It just tastes like candy. So it's like a, just a bottle cap shaped piece of candy. But I gotta tell you now, the star of this is that base, which is that lemon uh, orange, blood orange lemon tart, and it is delicious. Um, I can't wait for Stephanie to try this. The flavors overall, everything in it works perfectly together. Super delicious. So Corey was really excited about this blood orange lemon tart. I like orange and I like lemon, so I'm pretty sure I'll like it too. Let's give it a try. That is extremely good. I mean, it's really popping with flavors. That lemon itself really has like a zing to it. Um, it's very, um, not overpowering, but it's very strong. And that orange flavor is very, very nice. The blood orange pairs perfectly with that lemon. And the crust is really nice. Like Corey said, it's not sweet, but it does offer a very nice texture. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, I know he tried most of the items, but these blueberries appear to have something on them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give those a try also. Mm. There are so many flavors popping in this dish. Those blueberries almost have like a sugary coating on them and they're just very like tangy and tart, which is really nice because it pairs perfectly with the rest of the flavors on this dish. If you're looking for something sweet with a little bit of tang to it, this is a really good option here at the festival. All right, so that was our day here in Epcot for opening day of the 2020 Epcot International Festival of the Arts. And uh, there is a lot of food to be had here. Yeah, and we didn't even put a dent in it. Um, some of the favorites for me, let's see, for savory, I'm gonna have to go with the uh, braised beef short ribs with mm. that um, 
the uh, parsnip puree back in Germany. Hands down, that was one of my favorite of the savory items with the broccolini. Everything was so good and that balsamic flavor. It was such a good flavor. Everything paired perfectly together. How about you for savory stuff? Oh, for savory. You kind of hit the nail on the head with that beef because it's so tender. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. But I really, really also liked, I liked the chicken roulade. Yeah, you I know, that was the chicken almost, roulade was really good. Yeah, I almost forgot about that because I was early on, but that was actually very good also. Mm -hmm. Also the right. beef, the beef in Mexico. Yeah. was really good so that like the barbacoa in Mexico was mm -hmm. really tender and had a lot of flavor as well so yeah I mean it was all delicious but what about desserts oh that's pretty easy for me I highly highly enjoyed that rose panna cotta over from Canada I thought the rose flavor was just so fresh and I loved the pairing of it with the um help me out the green stuff <laughs> Help me out. I don't know. Yes, you do. Pistachio. Pistachio. The green stuff. Yes, it was absolutely delicious. All the flavors paired perfectly together, and it was so light and fluffy that I'm going to have to get that again next time we come back because I enjoyed it that much. I loved the whole idea of the peanut butter and jelly yeah. uh, funnel cake sandwich was delicious. I really enjoyed that. It, the one thing was that they could have restacked it a little differently and put the, the strawberry on the inside. I know it looks nice on the outside but it's not as practical to eat it was a mess and also we were trying to take pictures of it <laughs> before we took it to the table and all of the powdered sugar just blew all over as we just yeah, covered it was in covered sugar. in our glasses and everything but, <laughs> but it was delicious Florida. and so many good things to try out here the music the live music they have going on the painting we got to meet Paige O'Hara. I know, how awesome is that? And totally unexpected. We were literally just walking by and both of our mouths just kind of dropped open. We're like, I guess we're buying artwork. <laughs> we just had to meet her. I was like, that's Paige O'Hara. And then I asked and they're like, yeah, you have to buy a piece of artwork to go meet her. And I was like, well, that's fine because the artwork's amazing and I want something to get signed anyway. So what a cool treat to be able to do that, be able to meet the voice of Belle right here on opening day of the festival. And uh, there's just so much to do, so much artwork work to look at some cool new merchandise. I know we didn't go into the merchandise very much in the vlog, but we will be back here more definitely for some live streams and more fun times here at Epcot for the Festival of the Arts. And that's going to do it for us here today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe below for more like it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.